Okay, I'm still working on my uh, truss structure workflow. And uh, let's kind of show you what I'm, where I'm up to now. So I go top view and uh, shift A. And you know, there's, a, there's an add-on and add mesh. It's called extra objects. And if you add that, if you turn that one on and you shift A, you'll actually now have a single vert. So I'm gonna add a single vert in here. I'll go to the vertex mode. I'm in edit mode. So let's go E or G to move it. E, Y, we'll move it up. Kind of just do something like, maybe like uh, this. And then I can select these two, hit the F key, and I've got that set up. Now I'll select all, and right click and subdivide them all. And then let's go ahead and kind of divide these up. Let's take, uh, maybe go from here to here hit F and then we'll go, I'll subdivide that once and then go from here to here and hit F. And then that might be good enough. Maybe we'll go, yeah, let's just leave it like that for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and just delete all these ones we're not gonna use. Let's see, Control X, that deletes those. And let's move this one up a little bit. And that one up a little bit, something like that. So we get some kind of different shapes going on there. So um, now this is done. Let's go ahead and let's assign a weight to each of these vertices. So a item 0.5, add a modifier, which will be a bevel, make it vertices. And let's use the weight assignation for that. And I can move that up a little bit higher if I want something like that. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. I can. I, I, in fact, in this at this case, I don't even need to assign a weight to the vertices. I can just uh, leave it at none and just move this around to where I'm happy. And then I'll set this to something like three. And then I'll add the modifier skin. And I'll select A, just select all the vertices, and then Control A, and I'll move it down. Now this I've done before, and you've seen this before. But what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to get a idea of what I like here. So I think that's a pretty good weight. Let's go to let's add maybe four in there. So you can see, then I can just actually grab a vertice and just, I can move, move it around if I want. So I can move some of these vertices around, you know, so get something where, you know, I like. So the reason why I do this skin modifier is so that I can actually, at this point, play with this, kind of get an idea of what it is that I'm, I'm looking for. And a lot of people are saying, why don't you just start cutting it out of a, a regular plane? And the reason why is that actually I want to be able to play with it. I want to be able to see what, what happens when I move it, when I move things around, when I, when I adjust things. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I use this technique. Okay, I'm going to tab out of this and I'll grab this guy and I'll move him up. And then I'm going to say Shift A, and I'll go to the top view again, Shift A, and let's do a, add a plane. So this is the new part that I'm doing. So I'm going to make this plane quite a bit larger. And now I will go into here, and I'm going to viewport viz, turn these off. And now that's another add-on that comes with Blender. I think it's called the modifier, uh, modifier controls, something like that. But anyway, so I'll take that and I'll select this and select this, both of them at the same time, and then tab into them, right? And then hit A and select all, and then go into mesh and say knife project. And you can see when I knife project, I project it out of that. So I know that works. So I'm going to undo and do mesh knife project again. And there I have it. I can tab back out, go back into here. And I'm going to tab into this, and you'll see that I've got these little strange angles here, which are going to create a bit of a problem for me when I try and use the offset tool. So what I'll do is I'll go into vertex mode, I'll hit the K key for knife, and the C key, which constrains it, and the E key to end it. K, so I'll, same thing here, then hit return when I'm done. Then I'll go into uh, face mode, and I'm going to select these three and control X, and that dissolves those. So now I have a pretty good thing. So I can hit A and then let's tab out of this and let's go back in here and do the viewport viz. So I can see the actual size of what I'm looking for. Then I'll go back in here, tab with that A, I'll go 
II twice to inset. And now I'm moving around until I get it about the right size that I liked originally. And again, once I get that set, then I'll say X and delete the faces and then one, and I'm gonna grab all of these and all of these and X and delete the vertices. And then I'll go into here and I'll grab these two vertices and say merge at the center. And let's just go ahead and we'll turn this off so we don't so we see what's going on here. Merge at the center. Okay, and then I will say A, X, limited dissolve. So now I've done a limited dissolve and then I'll say K and I'll go back on my knife. And now I'm doing this because I want to be able to control the radiuses easier. So I'm gonna just kind of go through here and hit the E key to end, you know, as I go through. And I'm just cutting these guys pretty much in half. I think we're pretty good. That looks, I'll hit enter and then I'll go into the three mode again. And I'm gonna just start uh, putting some of these together like that, that, and this and this. So control X. That basically merges those faces together. This, 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 and this. Control X merges those faces together. Control X merges those faces together. And I think everything else is good. Now I'll go back into my vertice mode and some of these, I just need to control X just to get rid of them. They're just dissolving the vertices. So all I'm doing is dissolving vertices. Make sure I don't, I don't have any there that I don't need. So it looks like there's one here and we're in pretty good shape. So now uh, I've got, really, I've got this nice shape. Now I'll add the bevel modifier with the vertices, and this time I'll use weight for sure. And so I'll select, let's select like kind of the outside ones. These ones, these ones that have closer to right angles, something like that, that was not much of a right angle. Uh, that one kind of, that was not much of a right angle. These guys inside here are tighter than a right angle. Maybe this one and maybe this one also. And then let's just go in. We'll just jack this up and go mean bevel weight. So now as I move this up, notice when I get to a certain level, it stops. Even if I'm really large, it'll stop. So I don't want to go that far. I want to go maybe 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 something like this. And I'm not adding segments yet because I want to see how far I'm going on these. Let's take these. These are kind of the same here. And let's go ahead and add some bevel weight to these. Oops, some vertice bevel weight. So something like this might be good. Okay, now once I've, that's all set and done, now I can start, I'll maybe make it, I don't know, 10's fine, whatever. So we have, so now you start to see how nice this is working. Now, once I get to this point, I can do some interesting things. I can take this and this and this and G and slide it down, for instance, something like so. Uh, let's add some meme of a way to that. There we are. Notice once I get to a certain level, it's going to start removing it from the other. So I know I've gone too far. So I'll just start something like this. Okay. And then I can also just take these two and move them up as well. So, you know, so I can start to play around a little bit. Take this, maybe add a little bit of bevel that just a little bit. So I can start to play around to create some kind of more interesting shape. And once I've got that done, I'll tab into it and I'll go into the modifiers and I'll add a solidify bevel. And I'm gonna make this offset zero and let's just give it kind of a nice chunk. So there we have it. And then of course I can add another modifier, which is a bevel. We're starting to see that, notice that when I add a bevel, nothing happened. And why is that? Well, that's because probably Turn on our wireframe, I'll start to see where things are starting to get hung up. And I think it's right here. So this is where it is right here. So let's take a look at that a little better. And I'm gonna take that, this, so this vertice is at zero. This one, let's just make that at zero. And now once I've done that, yeah, I can actually move that just a tiny bit, yeah. So I'm gonna leave that at zero then. And then you can see all of a sudden the bevels popped right back in. So we're in good shape there. We have a little bit of a confusing thing going here. Let's take a look at that too. And let's see, we have a line here. Oh, that's one of my lines I'm using for dividing up. That's why that's working that way. Okay, so let's go back into there. And 
and him, I'll move him down so he's kind of lined up as well. I'll take, take, I'll take both of these, let's make them both zero, and then we'll just add just a little bit. There we go, something like that. And there we have it. Now, what if we want to put a piece in the middle? That's an interesting challenge. So what I'll do is I'll take this and say Shift D and right click. So that's, that's our new plane. And I'm going to tab into it, and I'm going to hit A, and I'm going to hit F to fill. And then I'm going to go in and turn off this bevel, get rid of that bevel, and get rid of the solidify. And then we tab back out, and you can see that we've got our face right in there. And let's tab into it again, and let's scale it just a tiny bit down. And then, now watch what happens when I add a solidifier modifier. So I'm going to add a solidify modifier, and notice it's not, it's just not working right. And even if I add my bevel, apply it, it's not going to work right. The reason why is I have two faces in here. When we did this, it created two faces. So I'm going to go back into here and uh, tab and select a face. Uh, these three, select a face, and say X, and just delete the faces. Now I've got now I've got the, the good one, right? So now I've got so now I can hit A. And now if I go ahead and add a solidify modifier, and we'll put it at zero also, and I adjust it, it's coming up. So you can see that works out pretty good. I made it a little smaller, and the reason why I did that is so I can shift click, tab, so I can shift click this one above here, and control plus using bull tools, and make sure that I've got it booleaned. I can add another bevel onto the inside of this. So I can say, that's a bevel two, and that's this little one in here. Or I can just delete this one, grab this bevel, and bring it down to the bottom. And you'll see that we now have this ready to go. So, and again, I'm having a little bit of a problem with the, uh, the bevel. And let's take a look at our model and find out why that is. This is good, but this is not good. The Boolean that we put on there is not working for us. And let's take a look at that object directly and see what's going on about that. So probably what I'd do is say A and then X and say limited dissolve and then tab back out. That's what we need to do. We forgot to do that. Now when we do that, notice how that second bevel comes in quite nicely. And there we have it. That looks pretty good. Now, one of the interesting things here is that if we're machining this, we might have this bevel up top like this. So that bevel might be something like that, but we might have a different bevel at the bottom. And so to do that, I'm going to move this above the bull tube plane, and I'm going to add another bevel. And notice it actually bevels it at the bottom, and it tries to bevel to the top too. And that's because we're doing an angle of 30. So let's do an angle of 46. And now we're getting the bottom bevel, but not the top. And in the bottom bevel, because the cutter is a ball-shaped cutter, I want to go ahead and add like maybe, I don't know, 10 segments of that. So that's how a machined part's going to look, right? It's going to actually have this ball shape down here, and it's going to have a chamfer around here if it's a, if it's a metal piece. Oh, by the way, one of the nice things is non-destructive, of course. And if I tab into it, object, and hit uh, 1, I'll see that I've got uh, a couple points here that have no bevel weight. So I can go ahead and add those in there, and then tab back out of that. And and now we're back in, <laughs> we're pretty much in a non-destructive workflow there. So I made that mistake, was able to fix it. And that's another thing I like about this, it uses that Nitrox 3D non-destructive workflow. So I hope this is uh, helpful for some of you. Um, and as you can see, the thing that I like the most about it is the fact that it gives me the ability to continually edit it and change it to where I want. Thanks for watching. We'll see you online.